Yasas, hello, I'm Algesis, and I'd like to welcome you to the Hellenic Wellness Movement. Since ancient times, Greece has been a place of healing. I'm on a mission to showcase the excellent services that modern Greece has to offer the world for wellness and well-being. To make you feel like a god or a goddess. Hello, my friends. I just want to share with you that this week I have an amazing interview with Dr. Elias Gourgouris, better known as Dr. Happiness in the United States. We're going to be discussing his book, so I hope you join us. We're going to talk about all the things that you can do to find lasting happiness. So, Dr. Gourgouris, Elias, as we have become friends, you are known as the happiness doctor in the United States and other countries as well. Why are you so passionate about happiness? I'm going to go back to Aristotle, just like you, since you brought him up. Because Aristotle, 2,500 years ago, said that happiness is the whole purpose and meaning of life, mm -hmm. the whole aim and end of human existence. Think about that statement. And to me, that's what it's all about. I think that's why we're here on the earth, to find some kind of happiness and and wellness and to spread that light mm -hmm. to our sphere of influence. You know, it could be 10 people or it could be a million people. We all have a sphere of influence. Because I believe that when the happiest version of ourselves is walking around on this planet, mm -hmm. we make this world a better place. By the example that we, how we lead our lives and how we live our lives. Mm -hmm. And we live in a complicated world. And especially in the post pandemic world, I ended up writing a book, uh, How to, Seven Keys to Navigating a Crisis, in the middle of the pandemic, intuitively at the very, very beginning, feeling that there's a mental health tsunami coming. I mm -hmm. felt it, mm -hmm. you know, because that was the first book to market, actually, in, in the world about it. I could just feel it, you know, early on. I co-wrote it with a good friend of mine, Konstantinos Apostolopoulos, I gotta give him credit, a fine Irish name. <laughs> <laughs> no, a fellow Greek. Greek-American. Yes. And in writing it, we discover that when, when people are facing challenges, it, and this isn't about the pandemic, we were all facing challenges. As a matter of fact, I claim that we're all graduates from the University of Adversity. When people are facing challenges in life, it, they usually respond in four different ways, mm -hmm. or four different personality types. And the first one we like to call the victim. And the victim like, why is this happening to me? Why me? Yeah, as if it's only happening to me, not seven billion other people, right? right? But it's all about poor me, and then you get down, you get depressed, and so on. So that's the victim mentality. The second one is the critic. Mm -hmm. And the critic, born in frustration and anger, and uh, they always criticize no matter what. So if you offer a, a solution, they'll find a problem with it. Right. I and, know and, people. I know a lot of people like yeah, that. No, like everybody. And, and the great Winston Churchill actually yeah. had a, this great quote about the difference between optimist and pessimist. He says, Optimists find a solution to every problem. Pessimists find a problem to every solution. So we know people like that. You say, hey, have you thought about doing this? Yeah. Oh, that's not going to work. Okay, well, have you thought about doing that? Well, I've already tried. That didn't work. Like, no matter what you offer them, they always find, and they're so stuck, again, in the victim mentality, but they're frustrated and they're mad. Mm. And, and that's all they do. The, sec the third one is, we call it the bystander. It's basically somebody who's so overwhelmed by the changes that are taking place and the challenges, mm -hmm. and they're so embedded in fear. Mm -hmm. in, in essence, they're frozen in fear. Mm -hmm. and, and so they don't know what to do. I mean, they're good people, but they're, they're just frozen in fear. They don't know how to react. They don't know how they're to react. They're on the fence, as they say. Yeah, and they sit and they do nothing. Mm -hmm. And what all three of these personality types have in common is that none of them offer a positive solution. Mm -hmm. None of them move that either it's poor me, either I get mad, or either I'm frozen in fear. And then we have the fourth type, which we like to call the navigator, which was the, you know, the, the premise of... And the navigator starts off with practicing massive self-care. Mm -hmm. Well, before I go to that, this is really mm -hmm. important, that all four of these personality types exist within each human being. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, well, I'm the navigator and you're the navigator. It's not like that. We all have it. And that's, you know, my psychology background and so on. Here's the key. Things will happen in life, and I think it's natural from sometimes to feel like the poor me, to feel like a victim, or to get mad at something, you know, some the government, your boss, or whatever. But you don't want to stay stuck there for six months. Right. Do that for 30 minutes, mm. get it out of your system. Exactly. If you're going to feel, feel poor me, do it. Right. Feel your emotions fully, but then pivot and become a navigator. Mm. Things happen sometimes that do catch us off guard, 
and we might be frozen in fear, but I don't want to be frozen in fear for 10 years. Right. Tell me a little about the navigator. So now the navigator starts off with massive self-care. The first thing that they do is they take care of themselves physically, emotionally, mm -hmm. mentally, and spiritually. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole aspect of that that, uh, you know, it's a whole different conversation that we have. Well, how do they do that? Mm -hmm. And I do a lot of workshops specifically about self-care. Mm -hmm. Or in Greek, as we call it, aftofrodida, which mm -hmm. is... Uh, navigators are also very flexible and adaptable. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are just stuck in their ways, you know? Yes. And there were a lot of people pre-pandemic that were stuck in their ways. They did not adapt mm -hmm. to all these massive changes taking mm -hmm. place. And they were left behind. Mm -hmm. And this is true both for individuals but for organizations too and companies. Mm -hmm. Well, we've been, this is how we've done things for the last 40 years. Right. We've been successful. I'm not going to change now. They'll entrench deeper in their ways. Right. To be stuck in that, go deeper and, and, and keep being stuck just to be right. Exactly. And kind of use the analogy of the, uh, the oak tree and the palm tree, both beautiful trees. Mm -hmm. But the oak tree is this massive, strong tree, right? Mm -hmm. 100 feet high. It's been around for a hundred years, but if there's enough rain, enough saturation in the ground and enough wind, mm -hmm. guess what happened to oak trees? They come crashing down on mm -hmm. people, cars, homes, I mean, this happens mm -hmm. all the time, especially in America. They're a bit rigid. rigid. Very rigid. rigid. On the flip side, palm trees, and I'm looking at a palm tree right here mm -hmm. in, your, in your beautiful place, at the peak of the storm, and this is symbolic of the storms of life, mm -hmm. the palm tree will bend. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it bends, it depends how fierce the storm is, parallel to the ground. Right, I feel, yeah. But then when the storm passes, just like every storm in life passes and the sun comes out, they rise up again and they're stronger than they were before because their roots had to dig down mm -hmm. underground. And mm -hmm. this is both physical but also symbolic mm -hmm. to hold on for dear life. Mm -hmm. So as I've shared this message around the world, people say, well, that's a cute story, Dr. Ilya. I'd remember that because mm -hmm. I say, be a palm tree, don't be an oak tree. Mm -hmm. But they're like, what does an palm tree, what does an oak tree look like in real life? Mm -hmm. In the oak tree is exactly that. Well, I'm, I'm told this is how I am. I'm not going to change now. This is how we've been for the last 20, 30, 40 years. Even as a company and organization or individually, that's an oak tree mentality. Mm -hmm. A palm tree mentality is like, well, this is a whole different landscape. This world has changed. We're not the same as we were before the pandemic, mm -hmm. globally. Mm -hmm. So I want to be flexible and adaptable. And Adapt or die, Darwin would say. Exactly. Those species that do not adapt, die. A couple months ago, I was invited to speak in Dubai at a Future Leaders Conference in the hospitality industry. Just a whole bunch of young, young, young people. And I love young people. I love speaking at universities and so on because they are the future leaders of... Uh... There's a mentality that the older you get, the more stuck in your ways you are. Mm -hmm. And I shared that with them. I said, you know, but I, I flipped the script. Mm -hmm. The older I get, the more flexible I want to be. Not set in my ways, well, I don't need to change now. No, I want to learn more from the new generation mm -hmm. because they do have different ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. So to me... There's new opportunities. First of all, there's new opportunities and, that you must be open to. But when people get older, they actually say, no, this is who I am, I don't want to change now. Yes. And I'm like, no, I want to continue changing until the day I'm, uh, I'm it's done. It's the comfort zone, Elias. And as you very well know, we are wired, our brains are wired into the comfort zone. So obviously it's going to hurt a little. It's going to be uncomfortable. That's that part. If you can just get over the uncomfort level, as you say, then you can take advantage of a whole new group of opportunities. I mean, the comfort zone is beautiful and comfortable. That's why we stay in it because we, we, we love like it. it. But no growth takes place no there. No growth, no expansion. So. Yeah. If you want to stay in your comfort zone for a while, that's fine. Yeah. But for me, growth, I love growing as a, personally as a human being. And, you know, Michelangelo, mm -hmm. as an old man, when he was interviewed, kind of like Socrates, like he described, they asked him, Master, Master, tell us something, you know, profound. Mm -hmm. And you know what his answer was? I am still learning. No. Think about who said Lifelong that. Lifelong learning. Michelangelo said, and I'm thinking to myself, if he said that at the end of his life, Shouldn't we continue to learn until the end? If a, if a great genius, genius like, like right. but the right. ancient Greeks, Greeks said that, that as, well. as well. They had they the motto, Yirasko ai vidasko menos. Eros, it means I grow older. Uh, ai means forever vidasko menos, forever learning. learning. That, I love that. It's a beautiful It's quote. the same thing. Yeah. So navigators have that open, you know, mindset. Open and, mind. Absolutely. And, you know, they, they, in English we have the saying is, you know, the, the mind is like a parachute. It only works when it's open. <laughs> Imagine we had a closed parachute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, 
So that's another thing that navigators do. And a couple more things, they practice gratitude. Mm. But not gratitude. When things are going well in life, it's easy to be grateful. Of course. Very easy. But since we're all graduates from the University of Adversity, can we be grateful in the midst of challenges? Which is not quite as easy, but that's the, the greatest learning takes place then. And it doesn't have to be the gratitude like, oh, I'm so happy this, that no, this problem came up. But it's more, you know how I say it? as like, this is a challenge. I have a curiosity about how this challenge can, you know, it's how I play the game of, of the cards. You right. know, you're, you're dealt the you're deck done. of cards. You know, it's how you're going to play those cards. Some people start out their life with the best cards, you know, queen, king, I don't know, whatever. Right. But it's ace. A, ace. <laughs> you know, some people get bored with that, but they don't play well. They lose the cards. If you if you're in the present moment, you're playing the game with gratitude, and you're enjoying the game and being open to being challenged. You play the game well, you can end up the winner, even if you didn't come into this life with the best cards. One of my role models, and you know, some of that. It has really moved me in, in my life. You, know, you have the people you look up, historical mm. figures, mm. is Nelson Mandela, mm. who, who said, in life, you either win or you learn. Mm -hmm. There's no losing. There's no losing. As long as you're learning something. Right. Right? So, Absolutely. we've achieved certain things in our lives, but the greatest, thing, the greatest lessons I've learned have not come from my successes. They've come from when things did not work out initially. And then you're like, thank you for that challenging lesson. Although in the in the moment as you're going through it, the it moment, sucks. It's terrible. It. You you're hate like, it. like, oh, why me? Poor me. But then you're like, if you could just take a moment and shift, as you said, and instead of being the why me, poor me, shift to what the navigator. This, right? You're like, you know what? Instead of fighting the waves, I'm going to sail the waves. I'm going to use the waves. That's or use the even the wind. Yeah, you the, use the wind. wind. Right. You're surfing the waves, you're using the wind. This is the navigator. Right. And it can get you maybe a lot further, a lot faster. So definitely navigator mode. And then the last thing I would say for navigators is as a result of all these things, because they're veterans or for their great teammates, I mean they're they're they practice a lot of kindness. Not because they it's an assignment or something, they do it from their heart because they feel so much gratitude for their own lives mm -hmm. and they look around. And they're not self-centered. They look around and say, hey, somebody is, let me offer them a helping hand. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like that's a great way to live life, to navigate through life in spite of the challenges that we face. Mm -hmm. And if people have asked, is it possible to have all these challenges in life and still be happy? And I'm like, absolutely. But mm -hmm. you got to do these things consistently. And the self-care part is massive. Yeah, that's my methodology. Kind of like, I love it. I love it. To be a navigator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're a Greek, so the navigator is in Isn't your DNA. Yeah, absolutely, yes. <laughs> The sailor, the sea, the navigator. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. you <laughs> we should do it Thank again. <laughs> like, comment, and share these videos with as many friends as possible.